We are live. Mark Kohler here, your tax lawyer expert. Well, I'm trying to be the taxation expert on cryptocurrency, all the above, safe taxes when we trade, mine, stake, do it in an IRA, not whatever. I'm here with you live today, uh, YouTube, Facebook, multiple portals. I'm going to be taking your questions and I want to help you try to Save some taxes this year if you have some cryptocurrency gains or you're looking down the barrel at some gains. Now, I'm a CPA, attorney, author, radio show, podcast host, and I'm a crypto trader myself. I'm a miner. I don't have my little mining hat on, but yes, I mine cryptocurrency and I'm even buying some real estate in game land in the metaverse, baby. How many tax lawyers do you know that are doing all those things? Well, I'm not saying I'm an expert at trading or making billions, but I'm trying. And I hope to help you out today. I've got another attorney coming from my office, Darren Charrington. He's going to join me down here on the end. And uh, I'm going to do my best here with an hour or less, trying to answer your questions and help you out for 2021. Now, disclaimer. Like I said, this is, this is a huge topic. I'm doing my best. Be patient. I know some of you that spend all day long dealing with cryptocurrency and studying blog articles and other websites and software that tracks your gains. They've, there's some great resources out there. So be patient. Don't beat me up. But we sign your tax return. We try to protect you from the IRS. And I know enough to be dangerous about the metaverse and all the different things out there that are just cutting edge. And I'm doing my best. Number two, we can't do this justice in an hour. And I want to announce, I'm going to write it up here right now. And then we're going to dive into some topics that I think are going to blow your mind. January 29th, coming up in just six weeks. January 29th, we are holding the first ever Cryptocurrency Taxation Summit. Cryptocurrency Taxation Summit. There'll be a link down below. There's an early bird special if you want to join us. A couple hundred bucks, a few hundred bucks if you want to come in person. We're doing it in Phoenix, Arizona for a whole day on a Saturday, the last Saturday of January in Phoenix, Arizona. It'll be live streamed. You can watch anywhere you want. We're going to be covering six topics in the link below. You can find out the different things that we're going to be covering. And at the end of the day, there's going to be an exam. And if you pass that exam, 80% or better, you will be a crypto, you will be crypto taxation certified. That's right. You're going to get a silver play button type <laughs> plaque that you are taxation certified for 2022 in cryptocurrency. And we're going to do our best. I'm bringing in experts from all over the country as well as myself. And we hope to wow you. So January 29th, 2022, the Crypto Taxation Summit. And I am so excited about this. Please come. Please register. The link's down below. Okay. Now, let's get to our topic today. I want to get right into it. Ooh, do we have Darren already here? This is going to be great. Okay. So... This is me. This is a webinar I gave that was two hours long on cryptocurrency. I'm going to just dive into some topics that I want to highlight today. Now, here's, here's tax brackets. Now, I know it may be hard to see. Corey, you might be able to zoom in a little bit. But, okay, before we go there, I'm, in fact, I'm going to take that off for a minute. Okay. Many of you may have some cryptocurrency gains this year. Now, let me explain. And I, I did, you know what? My partner said, Mark, you've got to tell everybody first and foremost what happens here. I'm, so I'm going to go here. You are taxed on either short-term capital gain or long-term capital gain when you sell cryptocurrency for a gain. Okay? So you buy some currency for $5 and you, that's your buy. And we call that basis. And then you sell it for $10. So you bought for five, you sold for 10, add zeros if you want, you have a gain of $5. Now here's the scary part. Some of you go, well, I just went into a stable coin. That's a sale. Well, I traded my Bitcoin for Litecoin. That's a sale. The IRS says you have a taxable event. Now, I know some of you better be sitting down because it's going to scare the hell out of you. And I'm sorry. Your taxable event is one, if you sell crypto and go back to US dollars, right? It's pretty easy. I bought crypto. I sold it. I'm back in US dollars. 
Now, all of you think, oh, that's the only time I'm taxed. Nope. Number two, you trade one currency. I will call it one token or coin. Please work with me. I know some of you experts out there. One coin for another. That creates a taxable gain. Trade one coin for another. So if I have, okay, let's say I have, I know not everybody's buying Bitcoin, but it's an easy example. Let's say I bought Bitcoin for 20 grand. I have one coin for 20 grand. And now it's worth, today it might be worth 40 grand. Let's do that. So it's worth 40K today. So that's fair market value. And so you trade it for Litecoin. Um, no, I, okay. And again, work with, I don't even know what Litecoin's going for today. But let's just say you trade it for Litecoin or Ethereum and you get 20 coins at 2,000 each. Okay. So you're saying, I just traded my Bitcoin, one coin worth 40,000 for 20 coins worth 2,000 each. Just work with me. Well, you're like, that's not taxable. Yes, it is. You had Bitcoin for 20, it's now worth 40, and you traded it for other coins. IRS taxes that. So you are now taxed on $20,000. And if you did it in less than 12 months, that's a short-term capital gain. So short-term capital gain is anything less, and I'm gonna put this in red. Oop. Oh no, did I lose that page? I think I did. Oh, damn it, Corey. I hate this. Short-term capital gain versus long-term capital gain. That's the button I wanted to push right there. If you do a trade in less than 12 months, and I know some of you have equations and programs and systems where you're trading daily. If you trade, you held it for less than 12 months, that's short-term capital gain. If you held it for longer, 12 months or longer, then that's long-term capital gain. So if we go back to our example, and I bought Bitcoin, one Bitcoin for 20K, and it's now worth 40K, and I trade it for 20 coins at 2,000 each, let's say, you have a sale. The IRS triggers a sale, and you have $20,000 in gain. Then we have to go back and say, okay, was did I do it in less than 12 months or did I hold it 12, 12 months or longer? 12 months or longer is taxed better. 12 months or less is taxed worse. Okay. Now, again, there's three ways, three triggers how the IRS is going to tax you. Now, I'm going to give you some solutions here the best I can here in a moment, but you got to understand first, short term or long term capital gain. Number two, I want you to tr understand triggers. You sell back to U.S. dollars, or two, you trade for another coin. And at the day you trade, the fair market value of your coin that you sold, or parts thereof, or whatever it was, you have to go back and look at your basis. I'm going to explain that, number three. And then number th three trigger is if you buy something with a coin. <laughs> maybe even in the metaverse. Did I just blow your brain? That's right. If I take a coin and go buy some land in game land, I mean some property in game land, I just exercised a sale of my cryptocurrency and bought something. Now, some of you are like, there's no way you can track that. The IRS can't track that. Okay, let's go to point number. <laughs> You're going to, I'm not, I am, you don't hate the player. I'm just playing the game. Have you ever heard that? Don't hate me. I'm just trying to tell you the rules. Number one, I want you to understand short-term and long-term. Number two, I want you to understand triggers. And number three, I want you to understand basis. Now, what basis means is if you, whatever you bought it for, okay, that's your basis. So if I bought it for $10 and then when I sell it, that's fair market value. When I sell and I've got to take the difference. So if it's worth $35 the day I sold it, I have a $15 gain. The IRS taxes that. Now, here's your last point, and then I'll get into some strategies here. Number four, I'm going to call it the first question. The first question. The first question on a 1040 tax return now. Everybody listen. The first question on your 1040 tax return, and if you lie, you go to jail. 
Did you, this is the first question on your tax return. Did you buy, sell, or exchange any crypto, any crypto in 2021? And you go, well, Kraken doesn't give me a 1099. Or I did it in the metaverse and I sold this and I did that. Or I played a video game and got some coin and then I traded it over to my Phantom trade. And then I went it over and I converted it over into my Bitcoin. And then I rolled it up into Coinbase or whatever. Whatever. You may think the IRS isn't going to find it. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. But if you lie on your tax return and tell someone, I didn't do any cryptocurrency. If they find out, that's tax fraud. You go to jail and you know the IRS is going to make an example of somebody. They are. They're going to try to send a message to the entire country. If you're doing crypto and trying to hide it in some sort of wallet that no one tracks and they can't catch you, you're going to jail. That's how, I mean, that's how serious it is. Now, some of you I know finally are going to go, how in the hell do you track all that, Mark? Because I'm doing 10 trades a day, five trades an hour. That's where software comes into play to track your trades. And if you go, well, the exchange I work with, they don't even track it. Well, it's in the blockchain. I can figure it out in the blockchain. So you're going to play around on Excel for three days in the, for 48 hours or whatever and try to put this all in an Excel spreadsheet at the end of the year? Guys, we are five weeks away from your tax return prep time. I mean, 2022 is around the corner. And then you'll have till April 15th to figure it out. Or you can extend. Now, if I haven't freaked out some of you, so be it. Now, Philip says, who went to jail? Philip, people go to jail all the time for cheating on their taxes. What I'm saying is someone's going to try to hide their cryptocurrency trades on, in some cold storage or some wallet that doesn't e exist in the U.S., doesn't even know about it. And if you get caught, then you go to jail. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying. I'm not from the IRS. I don't care. I don't want you to go to jail. I'm trying to figure this out. All right. Okay. So now let's do some strategies here. And I, I don't mean to be so dramatic. Maybe it's because I'm drinking my Red Bull Diet Coke mix right here. Mm. All right. Should I take a few questions or should we get into a strategy? All right. I'm going to give you a strategy. All right. Here's how, here's how capital gain works. Now, remember, you might have short-term capital gain or long-term capital gain. So if you buy cryptocurrency on Friday and you sell it on Monday... You pay tax on the difference. If I hold it at least 12 months, I pay long-term capital gain. So you may say, well, Mark, what are the rates? Well, guess what? Corey, be ready to zoom in. We're going to do our best here. So right there and then hit play. Okay. A little bigger. Okay. Single married. <laughs> okay. Let's just start at the top. Individual. Married filing joint, okay? If I, here's your ordinary income rates. Here's your capital gain rates. So I'm going to go with a single individual, all right? Um, someone says, how much of a loss can I claim on cryptocurrency? I'm going to answer those questions. And if people are out there trying to answer each other questions, that's fine. I'm going to try to go through this and say, no, you're wrong. I don't know. I, 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 if you're going to go answer someone's question, you better be ready to sign their tax return. And, and, and I'm just going to throw that out. Out here in the chat, I love that there's a conversation going on. This is a huge chat. But if someone gives you advice on how to handle your cryptocurrency and they're not signing your tax return, what good is it? Oh, well, you're not going to get taxed on that because you can put it in a wallet and the IRS doesn't know about it. That's tax fraud. I'm just telling you what it is. Now, maybe you'll never get caught. I don't know. Be careful. All right. Closer, please. We're hearing Corey. So zoom in on this bad boy. Okay. Ordinary income rates, capital gain rates. This is short-term gains. Short-term capital gain is taxed at ordinary rates. Long-term capital gain is taxed at a capital gain rate. So you held up more than 12 months. All right. So let's say I'm single and I have a $40,000 W-2. Some of you might like work at Starbucks or you got a great day job or whatever, and you're making 40 grand a year. You're going to be taxed at 12%. This is your taxable income. So let's say you have your standard deduction of $12,000. So you, I'm just simple, oversimplifying this, but let's say you bring in 50 grand, you have your standard deduction of 12, five, five, what, you know, and you net 40-ish somewhere in here. If you net 
between 10,000 and 40,000, your tax rate on those dollars is 12%. That's for the Fed. It's not counting state. So if you have a day job and net thirty, forty thousand dollars, then you go out and make fifty grand in your cryptocurrency day trading. You're now up to one ten. One hundred and ten thousand is going to be taxed between twenty two is going to be at twenty two percent up to eighty four thousand, and then twenty four percent up to one hundred and sixty. So if you so you may say, well, my day job is taxed worse. Nope. Short-term trades in crypto is added to your W-2. And then that's your individual rate. Where it gets ugly is if you make more than 160 grand on your short-term capital gain, plus, so your day job and your crypto short-term gains, you're now at 32%. You add 10% state to that, you're paying 40% in taxes. And you're like, well, I don't have any cash in my bank. It's all in my crypto wallet. Well, you better convert it to US dollars to pay the damn tax. That's how ugly it is. All right. Now, if you're married, it's kind of double everything. So it's 12% up to 80 grand, then up to 322,000 is 22%, and it starts to get ugly at about 400 grand. Now, some of you may go, well, I want capital gain. I want capital gain. I held up more than 12 months. All right. So I don't pay tax. It's 0% on the first 40,000. And if I'm married, it's 0% on the first 80,000. Woohoo! So I can pay zero tax on the first 40 grand if I'm single, 80 grand of short term capital gain if I'm married. All right, let's see how that looks. Okay. Corey, I want that out of presentation mode. Okay, so here we go. All right. You may think. Sorry, everybody. I'm trying to get this damn thing to work properly here. I do not want presentation mode, and I'm trying to get my screens back. Sorry, you may think I'm really techy, but there we go. Thanks, Corey. I hit the X. Okay, now, you may think, here's my regular W-2 job. I'm going to get taxed here, and then I have long-term capital gain. Well, it's zero up to the first 20 grand, right? That's what we just said. It's zero up to 40 grand if I'm single, up to 80 grand if I'm married. So you say, okay, well, I can carve out. So in this example, I have 104,000 in two W-2s, married, filing, joint, and I have a zero bracket over here on my capital gain. Wrong. It's called stacking. Buckle up. Stacking says, no, 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 no. The long-term capital gain rate is zero on the first 40 grand of, if that's all your income, we have to stack it. So you take your ordinary income plus your capital gain, then you drop it into this bracket. So we have people that are like, well, I, I don't wanna, capital gain rates are different. They're different on the portion once it's stacked. You have to stack it together. <sighs> Now I've got Darren Charrington, our resident tax attorney expert on crypto taxation. He's going to join us here. I'm going to field some questions, Corey. Can we get some questions going? Because I really want to, I know people are upset. They have some, and there, some of you are saying, Mark, you got it wrong. I want to answer it all. I want to do the best I can. And I'm going to repeat everybody, January 29th, an entire day dedicated with a workbook, a certification quiz at the end of the day. We're going to be doing networking. I'm going to have multiple experts all day talking about crypto taxation. All right, Michael D. Okay, uh, Michael D. says, what software tracks your trades? What do you recommend? Okay, I'm going to give you just a few here. Um, one, the Cointracker.io. Let me just get, and I'm, we're going to be having some sponsors on our January 29th workshop, and we're going to be vetting some of these in the meantime. But some of the software you want to look at is Cointracker.io. Can you get Darren in here too, Corey? SourceForge has a page where they tell you SourceForge.net lists a bunch of options. But Cointracker.io, there's Crypto Trader Tax. 
dot tax, crypto trader dot tax. And then the last one is taxbit.com. Taxbit dot whatever. Just Google it. Taxbit. Okay. So these are three cointracker.io, crypto trader dot tax, and taxbit. Now, how you integrate those with your exchange and download all your transaction on your blockchain and inputting them into these, you'll go figure that out. That's not today's podcast, but those are some software programs. Anything you want to add to that? Well, I think the problem is that if you're going to be doing this, it's really good to look at each of the different software to see if it has QuickBooks um, ability to export QuickBooks, because that's going to make it a lot easier on your accountant. Well, and also if it coordinates with the exchange you're using or the wallet. Yeah. there. So a lot of the newer stuff, if you're involved in like a new chain that's kind of just on its initial coin offering or even on its, you know, test net, then that might not actually be linked to some of these programs. And so you're just going to have to find a block explorer and pull it off of there. Okay. Now, Eric, I want to go to Eric's comment up here. This is a good one, Eric. He says, what about wash sales? Okay. Now, everybody, take a breath. This is deep. If you're going to be doing crypto trading, you got to know this. So, okay. So let's look at stock and we could just say GM stock versus Bitcoin, you know, boy, probably two behemoths in the history of whatever, right? So we have stock and we have Bitcoin. Now, listen, everybody, this is going to save you some taxes freaking today. I hope with GM stock, let's say I bought it three years ago for a hundred dollars and I bought it one share of stock. I don't know what it's trading for, but let's say, and now today it is gone down. It's gone down in value. Oh, no, no. I'm going to do a better example. This is going to be good. You have some GM stock that you bought for a hundred and it's worth two fifty. Okay. So you have a $150 gain. All right. Now you also have over in your portfolio in the stock market, I'm going to relate this to crypto. So you've got, let's say, um, earlier this year, you purchased, um, some Tesla stock. I don't know what it's trading for, but it's probably off the chart, right? But let's say you bought it for $300 and today Tesla is trading for uh, $200, okay? So the fair market value is 200, but your basis is 300. If you sold it today, you'd have a loss of $100. Now, what people in the stock market have tried to do for years is they'll say, oh, I'll sell the Tesla stock get the loss and I'll just repurchase my Tesla stock the same day. So I'm going to harvest a loss. Then I'm going to use this loss against my gain on my GM stock. So I've got this sale that I made. I've got a gain of 150 and I'll just sell the Tesla stock and repurchase it the same day. Can't do it. It's called a wash sale because if you turn around and rebuy what you just sold, it's called wash sale, not allowed can't do it. Not allowed. Okay. Now with cryptocurrency, wash sales are okay. So let's say earlier this year, you sold some Bitcoin and you had a gain of $50,000. You have a $50,000 gain on Bitcoin or you traded Bitcoin for Ethereum, which is taxable, or you use Bitcoin to buy a, a new car taxable. So you sold Bitcoin, traded Bitcoin, did, moved it to a different exchange with new, new, a different currency, you're going to get taxed on that. Okay. So you have a $50,000 gain. Oh, but right now the market's down this week and you've got a loss sitting there. You bought, let's say Litecoin uh, earlier this year and you bought $20,000 worth of Litecoin and now it's worth $10,000. Okay. So let's go fair market value. So if you just sold all your Lit Litecoin and just rebought it, you want to keep that Litecoin because you know it's going to go back up. So you sell it and rebuy it in the same day. You just harvested a $10,000 loss. You can use that loss against your gain from the Bitcoin earlier in the year. Wash sales are currently allowed under cryptocurrency. But guess what? Under the new legislation that the Biden administration is kicking out starting 2022 in the new legislation, no longer allowed. 
So this could be the last time you're able to do a wash sale. So Eric, oh, Build Back Better Deal is looking to seal the wash sale loophole for crypto. So don't get used to doing this. Thank you, Blake. That's exactly right. Do you want to add anything to this? No, I, I think it's perfect. You mentioned the Build Back Better Act. Everything is maybe changing the air. Now, it hasn't officially gone through. And so, you know, we'll see where it ends up. But yeah. Okay. Carlos says it only allowed to deduct 3000 a year. Uh, not aware of that. Is he, I mean, the capital loss. Yeah, yeah, I think he's trying to use losses against ordinary. Oh. Well, okay, Carlos. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. We got to bring in the Kohler trifecta. And I'm hopefully you're watching my other YouTube videos. I've got millions of views on other YouTube videos that have nothing to do with crypto, but building your wealth, real estate, saving taxes, small business. Because a lot of you have a side gig. All right, so here, everybody, this is an important point of Carlos. Let's say you have a W-2 day job. Let's also say you're driving for Uber, okay? An Uber is a 1099. That's a small business. You take all your write-offs and you have net income. So you've got net income from Uber, and then you say you have some W-2. This is ordinary income. Now, over here on this side of the equation, you have your coins, and you have capital gain, and you're gonna do some losses with the wash sale strategy, okay? So you sell some crypto and rebuy it. I'm, you can only use these losses against capital gain on this side of the wall. If you have more losses than gains, so you've got a loss overall, it's called a net capital gain loss, net, I'll just call it a net loss. You can only use 3000 on this side, Carlos. And then you have to carry the rest forward. So it goes into a bucket and you carry it forward and you can only harvest 3000 every year over here. So what I'm talking about is many of you that have some serious capital gains that you're sitting on from crypto trading earlier in the year turn around and sell some of your crypto at a loss and rebuy it right now. Generate a loss to try to bring this capital gain down a little bit, but these losses, you can't just bring them over against your W2 or Uber. That's where there's a limit. So hopefully that helps, Carlos. Uh, the, gu the guest mic is a little low or you need to talk louder. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, thanks guys, thanks Celeste, truck boy. Um, okay, let's do another question. Oh my gosh, nodes. We're seriously going to go there. All right. Alexander says, if you own your own nodes and are generating passive income from them, some of it reinvested, is it better to start a business for tax purposes? Pluses and minuses. Now, <laughs> can I just put it in the trifecta? Absolutely. Nodes and stakes. Yep. Okay. Now, everybody, this is, what's his name? Alexander. Yep. Everybody, you're thinking, oh, nodes is passive income. Hell no. It is a business like staking, like mining, nodes. You say, well, it's passive. I'm not doing anything. No, it is ordinary. So everybody out there in your trifecta, and I'm going to let Darren tell you some what to do to save taxes here. But here's your trust. Here's your 1040. And some of you are like, I don't need a trust. I'm not wealthy. All of you need a freaking trust. I don't care if you're 21 years old or 91 years old. I've been teaching this for 20 years. You need to up your game on business education and asset protection and privacy. So a lot of you in the crypto world have been sucked in into now the business world. And I got you, Darren and I got you. I do podcasts every week. I do YouTube videos every week. Okay, okay, okay. Now, if you're gonna get a W-2 at work, that's a day job that comes down into your 1040. But if you're gonna have a side hustle, let me tell you an example of a side hustle driving for Uber, being a consultant, mining crypto, <laughs> staking, nodes. Those are businesses. You're going to have expenses. You're going to have income and you're going to have net income, which you're going to be taxed on. This side has nothing to do with buying and selling cryptocurrency, short-term capital gains, long-term capital gains. Your trading is over here. 
your nodes are over here. So Alexander asks, and I'm going to put Darren on the spot. He's my crypto taxation. He's a real lawyer, Michigan State. I mean, this guy is legit. What do I do with node income? Yeah. If, if you're operating a node or you're participating in a node or staking to a node, right? It's the same thing as mining. Essentially, you're providing computing services to help to maintain the ledger and to create new blocks on the chain. And so since you're providing a service and getting paid for that service, it's subject to ordinary income. They treat it like business income. You have to pay self-employment tax on it. Now, with self-employment tax, what we do is we're going to run it in through an S corporation. And the way that the S corporation works, if we're going to do this as an LLC or just a sole prop, you know, just doing it yourself, you're going to have all of your, all of your gross income come in. So all of your rewards, you'll take out expenses, any kind of write-offs for electricity or maintenance or anything like that. And then you're going to get it down to your net income. And so in an LLC or by yourself, you have to pay self-employment tax, which is that 15.3% for Medicare and social security on 100% of that net income. So what we do you know, now, you don't make it sound scary enough. <clears throat> Can Sorry. you make it sound okay? Do LLC okay, Darren? Do LLC save taxes? No. Hell no. If I set up a sole proprietorship and do nodes or staking or mining, do I save on self-employment tax? No. Hell no. People, if you're out there doing staking or mining or nodes, you get to write off your electricity and some of the crap you bought along the way, and then you're taxed at fifteen point three percent, then federal, then state. Say bye-bye to about 50% of your income. Okay, was that dramatic enough? That was very I'm dramatic. trying to make sure people get this. <laughs> now, if you run it through an S corporation, which is an LLC taxed as an S corp, tell them how it works. Now, you know, okay. Get more dramatic. All right. Okay, damn it. Okay, <laughs> okay so now you're going to take that net income. You're splitting it into two different... Two different um, Two different draws, essentially. Two different types of income. Two different types this of income. You launder money, people. people. Okay. okay. All right. So you got your S corp, yep, or LLC taxes and S corp, and I have node income. So okay. So walk us through it. Right. Get that node income in. Take out your expenses and deductions, and then you're going to take a W two that you're going to have to pay that self employment tax on, and then you're going to take a K one, and with the K one, no self employment tax. No self employment no tax. tax. No Obamacare. Now you still pay your federal and state, but we just save 15% on the bulk of your income. So over here, we channel somewhere between 20 to 40% of your income in a W-2 or lower, and then we drop the rest through a draw. Every dentist, doctor, realtor, engineer, plumber, electrician, lawyer, accountant, even Joe Biden had an S-corp for his book deal before he became president. This is what everybody does. And you may say, well, I'm in cryptocurrency. I don't have to do this. BS. If you're mining, staking, or doing nodes, or on the metaverse, making income in a game, that is taxable. That's right. The income you make in the metaverse is taxable. You think the IRS is going to be cool with that? If you don't like it, move to another country. Renounce your citizenship. That's what the IRS is saying. Because the metaverse is taxed. Does that freak out enough people, maybe? Whew. Okay. Oh. Now, That's someone said I live in, in Texas and sell crypto. Do I need to collect and remit sales tax? No. Sales tax does not apply to selling crypto. You're okay. All right. So, people, if you're in this situation, you've got to either, for 2021, if you're like, well, I didn't even have an LLC. I didn't even have an S Corp. I just made a bunch of income. You're, in, you're going to take it in the rear for 2021. For 2022, make an appointment with one of our tax lawyers or go talk to your accountant or go figure this out. Come to our January 29th taxation, crypto taxation summit, get certified, know what the hell you're doing. And in 2021, I mean, in 2022, do it right. I want you to make money in crypto. I want you to make money in the metaverse, but you got to play the game because you're a U.S. citizen. Anything you want to add? Absolutely. Well, I saw a lot of comments on here about, oh, that's double taxation and they're hitting us twice and, you know, th things like that. So I think it's good to clarify oh, yeah, that. You're right. <laughs> that Some of you were pissed about this. That's double tax. You want to get it worse? Go put this in a C Corp. If you go put it in a C Corp in Nevada or Delaware, it's even worse. I've written books on this, people. 
guys, I'm legit with this shit. I am not screwing around. I'm a real CPA with a, a real attorney signing tax returns. And I know I'm totally dramatic today, but it's like people think, well, it's in a wallet somewhere that no one sees. Wrong. On the first question on your 1040 is, did I buy, sell, or trade crypto? Go ahead and put no. See you in jail. You know, don't bend over for the soap. Now, here's the thing. There's some strategies out there. You got to start to learn this. Now, if you don't like self-employment tax, welcome to the restaurant around the corner that's paying self-employment tax because their dad told them to be a sole proprietor. Get it? No. That's where the S-Corp comes in. We have strategies for you. If it's double tax, it sucks. Do you have a tax service in New York State? People, we do taxes all over the country. The problem is right now, I'm recruiting because we have a wait list. Now, it doesn't mean you can't learn from us and bring your accountant up to speed and find the right accountant. There's a lot of great accountants out there. They're just crappy at marketing and teaching. We want to teach you. We want you to help find you the right accountant. So at our tax summit in January, I hope to have another 20 accountants working for me and we help people all over the country with their taxes. We can set up LLCs or S-Corps all over the country. If you want to try to get on a, an appointment, it may be in January. If you want to try to get on our wait list, just call our main number, 888-801-0010. You can go to the law firm at kkoslawyers.com. Now, I know some of you are like, I need an appointment next week. If your lawyer is available tomorrow or next week, you may have the wrong lawyer. We're out three to four weeks at least on some of our appointments, but it's okay. Keep learning, chill out. All right, do you choose a question? I have a okay. sorry, a, oh, sorry, I would like that. Who said they had a sorry ass LLC? I wanna to go to that. Jose Pena says, I have a sorry ass, ass LLC. LLC. Jose, that's okay. That could work for you. Tell us why. Okay. Yeah, so as long as you have that LLC set up. Okay, this is Jose. Right. As long as you have the LLC already set up, we can backdate an S election on that LLC. Okay, so let's say Jose, Jose had an LLC. Ooh, let's, make, let's erase this. Everybody, this is good. If you had an LLC on as of January 1st, 2021, you can be an S Corp for the whole year. We have a procedure. Oh my gosh, we charge 200 bucks. It's that easy, 200 bucks. We turn it into an S Corp, issue your payroll, and Jose, you're saving money. But if you call us up in December and go, I don't have an LLC, then we're gonna set up your LLC for 2022 and make it clean. Now, my daughter's a realtor. She was like, dad, do I need an S Corp? I said, no, you're not making enough money, but let's set you up an LLC so that if you do make money, I can backdate it. That's the trick. Jose, you're doing great. No employees. I know, Jose, you're going to be the only freaking employee. Everybody, if this is interesting to you, go to YouTube. I'm going to type, write it right here. Go to YouTube, <laughs> type Mark Kohler, or just type Kohler S Corp. I've got video after video to help you get this down. Cryptocurrency can be trading or business. You've got to learn the business part. Uh, how many years can you back? Tell, Tell her. Yeah, you can go back to the start of the LLC. But for one year. Well, you don't want to, a lot of times you don't want to go past January 1st because then you're going to have penalties and things like that for misfilings. Yeah, so. Arcelia. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, Darren. Damn you. Okay, you could go back further than a year, but the penalties and interest for you not having your crap together further than a year, not good. So we're only going to backdate you to 1 1 21. So we can save this year, but I can't save last year. Um, oh, Corey, slow down. Which question are we taking? I love you guys. Thanks for asking questions. Yeah, go up a bit, Corey. There's one, oh, one about reporting. Mining, trading in the metaverse. I got new respect for you, bro. <laughs> Poppy, thanks. Dude, Sunday night, I was in the metaverse like on game land, like trying to buy property in the Bronx. It was freaking awesome. I, I got to give a shout out. <laughs> got to, Remy Campbell is my teacher. He's freaking awesome. I've got to get him. He's out. I got to get more information. I got to have Remy here on the show. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So there was a question up here is just asking about reporting, right? Okay. Okay. We're, we're a self-reporting. We're on a self-reporting system, 
right? So sure, it might be out there in a wallet or cold storage where you don't think that people are going to be able to track this down and find you. But if you don't report it on your taxes, you're committing tax fraud. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth it, right? And the thing is with a lot of crypto, it's not as private as you'd like to think. Stay there, Corey. Most of this is on a public ledger and you can track it from wallet to wallet to wallet. Okay. And so, yeah, be yeah. careful with that. Okay, everybody listen, listen. Listen, back in the 80s, back in the 70s, even the 90s, a lot of wealthy people would say, I'm going to go put my stock transactions in Switzerland or the Cayman Islands. Go watch the movie The Firm with Tom Cruise. They were doing deals in the Cayman Islands. They were trying to hide income offshore. And for years, you could generally get away with it. But the IRS has now, in the last 10 years, struck treaties with all these countries, said no more. You cannot hide income offshore anymore with all these different countries. The same thing is going to be coming down the pipe with crypto and the metaverse. They are going hard at Coinbase, Voyager, Gemini, Kraken. Kraken's in trouble right now. Everybody's, the IRS is like, uh-uh. All those transactions, just like Merrill Lynch and Scott Trade and Ameritrade, public record for tax purposes. You may say, well, that's not, that's my privacy. Too bad. Move to another country. This is how the IRS works. Now, Matthew Moon says, why can't you claim staking as a hobby? Because you're making money. I mean, why would I, I'd, I'd love to claim my horse racing business as a hobby, but if I sell a horse and make more money than expenses, I pay taxes. So how it works. You go out and open a lemonade stand. You make money, you pay tax on the lemonade. Well, the IRS can't track it. Well, lie on your 1040. Good luck. Maybe they won't catch you. All right. Other questions you like? Okay. Clinton says okay. if I lost a hundred grand trading crypto, should I claim that on my taxes? Hell yeah. People, if you lost money in crypto, claim it just like you have to claim your gains. Now, someone asked, um, Randy says, can I switch my LLC to an S-Corp anytime? Hell yeah, Randy. And I probably want to backdate it for the whole year. Get a consult with an accountant. Make sure you're on top of this in the next six weeks. Okay. Now, everybody, let's, let's resign. Re relax here for a minute. Whew, I get so excited. Whew, let's make it easy here. Let's say some of you did some crypto trading. The one thing you want to do is try to figure out all the transactions you did during the year. You're going to look at how much you bought them for, which is your basis, and how much I sold them for. And you're going to go line by line and find out, did I have a gain or did I have a loss? Now, a lot of the software out there is going to help you. Now, in all of these gains and losses, at the end of the day, it's going to say how much of those gains and losses were short-term, meaning they were transactions you did in less than 12 months, and how many were long-term? You held those stocks more than 12 months. Okay. All right, everybody? So what you do is software will help you is you're going to look at all of your crypto trades throughout the year. What did I buy them for? What did I sell them for? Was there a gain or loss? And then your software or you on freaking... Excel, you're going to have to figure out how many of these deals and you go, oh, that was short term. Oh, that was short term. Oh, that was long term. That was long term. And at the end of the day, I need to know how much of your money was short term and how much of it was long term. Right. Okay. Everybody, you're getting that right. Watch that over again if you need to. Now, once we know how much is short term, you're going to add that to your regular income, whatever your bracket is. And you're going to pay ordinary tax on that, but not self-employment tax because self-employment tax does not apply to trading. See, the self-employment tax is over on the other side with mining, nodes, and staking and uh, selling product on the metaverse. Okay. Now, if it's long-term, you get capital gain. Long-term capital gain. See, some of you are like, well, I get short-term capital gain on ordinary. Short-term capital gain is the same as ordinary. Sorry. Spoiler alert. Buzzkill. Okay? But long-term capital gain is where you get better rates. 
So that's where we go and we go over to our table. Oh my gosh, I'm dying here. Is it three fingers up? Okay. Oh, I go and hold it. There we go. Okay. So look at our table. Short, short term is ordinary rates. Long-term capital gains are long rates. Okay, so Corey's gonna zoom in. Again, everybody, we just looked at this a little earlier, but once you know, do I have short-term capital gain, it's in the blue column. If I have long-term capital gain, it's in this column. And you're gonna say, oh, I take my one income and put it here, my other income and put it here. No, for these rates, you have to stack it first. And that's where I put this in here where your long-term capital gain is not off to the side, it's on top. And then we find out what your rates are. Okay, I wanted to just bring it down to ground zero again. Okay, you get to choose questions. Oh, Corey's got a question here for us. Yes, you could. Go, go, you wanna explain or you want me to? I'll go for it. Okay, so let's say you own a restaurant and on the weekend, Someone breaks in and steals all the food you bought for the upcoming week. You get a write-off for the expenses that you paid for that you don't get to use. Someone hurt you. Someone ripped you off. Now, if some of you put money into a deal and you get scammed, you get to write that off against the other income doing the same thing. So if you're investing and you get ripped off or you have a loss, you get to take that. So in this equation, if you had short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains, if you had losses, whether they were short-term or long-term, we would take those losses here and then we net it out and go find out what bracket you're in. Okay. Okay, I've got a question from Don Wells. Corey, keep it on that page too. He says, I'm 71 years old. I do have a substantial amount of top tier crypto that I have never touched, only held. Is there anything that can be done because of my age to be protected when I do touch it? Oh, I love it. Okay, everybody, this is where you want to go to YouTube and type Kohler Charitable Trust. Because if some of you have some huge value crypto that you're just sitting on, and I know many of you are like, I bought this crypto three years ago, five years ago, and I'm just sitting on it, and it's worth one to two to three million, and you're just sitting on it, and the tax is going to kill you, that's why I've been working on charitable remainder trusts. I am so busy. I'm literally, that's what I'm working on tonight. And we've got a wait list. I'm trying to get people in. But with crypto down right now, that's okay. Let's get your charitable trust in place. We donate all your crypto to a trust. You get income the rest of your life. There's a charitable deduction. And the rest goes to charity when you die. And there's just so many things. I got a video on it. Go watch it. So what was his name? Don. Don. Yep. Go watch the video, Kohler Charitable Trust. I've got two videos out there. I'm not a big fan of the crat. I want you to use the crut. Someone a little earlier said, Mark, I just sent in all my info for the crut. I've got a waiting list. You work with me personally on a charitable trust. Eight grand in 2022. Eight grand to do a trust. Pay zero tax when you sell. Freaking awesome. Okay, I like um, Hoppy's question again. Oh, no, no, no. Where was that? Okay, Clark. Clark Gustafson says, hosting a minor with someone else. Who pays the taxes, the owner of the host or both? Well, Clark, first of all, you, you, you only one person pays tax. So now if some of you are like, Mark, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, let me throw this out. I just want to wow you here. This is my crypto mine. <laughs> This is mine. Now this is with three cards. I now have four more cards on here. This is a 12 card motherboard. Here's my CPU. And I'm just working through NiceHash. I know some of you are better at it than me. NiceHash works great for me, but this is my mind. Now everybody pay attention. Here's with my mind. If I set up the NiceHash account, all the income is gonna come to me. I write off my cost of the equipment and write off my electricity, I pay tax on the net gain. That's mining. Now, if someone's hosting it for me, you have to ask yourself, are they just hosting the mine and running it through your NiceHash account for you and then charging you? 
So if you're claiming the income, you're going to write off the expenses paying them. Now, I guess some hosts might claim the income for you, pay the expenses and give you a 1099 for the net. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't know about that. But I mean, if, if there are hosting fees or expenses or anything like that, yeah, if you're getting paid to host it, you're going to have to pay taxes on what you're getting paid, but that's separate income from the mining, yeah. right? You're, yeah. you're offering IT services at that point. It's not, yeah. it's not the mining rewards. Now, I have a 13-step process of how to mine with two entities in your Roth IRA. Now, guys, I'm going to blow your brain here. And I know many of you, like Don, you've got cryptocurrency in your own name. There's nothing you can do about it now to get it into your Roth IRA or 401k. But what we're trying to do is get our clients to open their Roth IRAs or solo 401ks from the income they're mining. So you can set up a mine, make money, fund a 401k, and go buy crypto in your Roth 401k tax-free. Bing! Oh, should I drop my pen? Okay, so my mine that you just saw here, this is owned by my Roth IRA. So all the crypto that I earn, I pay tax on the earning, and then everything else that grows tax-free. Um, XRP says immediate with no gain. That's right. If I'm, um, if I buy cryptocurrency in my Roth IRA, I can buy and sell all day long and I don't pay any tax. I I've got it right here on my Gemini app I'm doing in my crypto. So uh, I mean, I mean in my Roth IRA. So now that's okay. So on our big event, we're doing on January 29th, we're going to talk about buying, selling crypto, just trading mining staking and nodes liquidity providing the liquidity providing yield farming on top of that yep. lending um just your typical trading then we got that's topic one i got yeah. six topics then we're going to do okay. mining we're going to do charitable remainder trusts we're going to do trading in your roth iras gosh there was something else it's on the link down below go look at it okay please tell us how to buy real estate in the metaverse Oh, by the way, it's with a T, not a D. BWIC 6. It's Metaverse, M-E-T as in Tom Aver. Anyway, go look it up. Okay. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm Okay. I've got to have my trainer, Remy Campbell. This guy's freaking awesome. I'm going to have him come on the show, but I'll just give you a little teaser. I'm going to, you ready? ready? Okay. You got to correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So <laughs> you're going to start out with some sort of coin, some sort of coin. So you're going to go to, let's say Coinbase, you're going to buy the coin that works best for, so you have to think, okay, I'm going to go out here into the metaverse and there's different metaverses, right? Everybody's trying to find, you know, everybody's trying to figure out who's going to be the Oasis. That's what we're trying to figure out. Who's going to, who's going to really be the metaverse that everybody's going to go to. Facebook's trying to play in the game. <laughs> hey, I, I got my player, you know, yeah, yeah. ready player game, ready player one. Is that what, ready player one? Okay. So the big question is who's going to be the metaverse that everybody's going to play in. So you kind of have to realize there's a lot of risk out there. This is a, the wild, wild west. All right. So you got to figure out where am I going to play in which metaverse? Now I was playing with, um, game land. All right. Okay. Game land, right? That's what, no, is that what it's called? Central land. Or yeah, possibly no. sandbox or no, no, no. Where, 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 no. Freaking, was it game land I was in? Okay. okay. I, I got, got it. Okay. okay. Um Is it Upland? Upland. 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 Okay. okay. So, so I was in Upland, which is a type of metaverse. All right. So if you're gonna you gotta figure out where am I going to figure out which coin to go play. So I was gonna play in Upland, and I need a specific coin for that, which I think is Atlas. Is it Atlas? I don't know on that one. I, I think, think it's Atlas. Atlas, but I got to get to Atlas. So I go with the Coinbase. Then I'm going to go to a wallet. Um, I think we went through Phantom. And then you do a conversion over to Atlas. Then once I have Atlas coin, then I can go buy real estate in Upland, which is a metaverse. <laughs> now, I probably butchered that, everybody. Be patient. I'm just a dumb tax lawyer that's 50 years or older. I know I look younger. But anyway, but... I will have an expert out soon and we will talk about how to buy real estate. So this is virtual real estate in Upland. You're going to use the coin that you have to in Upland. you got to get coin from U.S. dollars into Coinbase, into a coin that you convert. 
da, 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 then you get over to Upland. Now it's tricky. Is that all right? Did you like yeah. my explanation? Yeah. So whenever you're trying to buy any cryptocurrency, what I recommend is going to be coingecko.com and coinmarketcap.com. So if you go in there, you search the coin, you find it on there, there's going to be a tab that says exchanges, okay. and that's going to list all the places that you can go and buy it. And Upland, you could buy an airline, you could buy a bus station, you can buy real estate and develop it in Upland. Oh, some of the some of the most valuable uh, NFTs right, <laughs> right now are actually jetpacks. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Yeah, jetpacks came out a little while ago. There's a blimp that you can go and like fly inside of the blimp, and it's like kind of a yeah big it. deal. You pay, right. right? Yeah. yeah so. All right. Okay. okay. We're. Do I need good credit? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I've got to go get on a plane. I got to go get on a plane. Okay, everybody, hey, January 29th, let me repeat, down below is our Crypto Taxation Summit. It'll be virtually broadcast. If you want to come live, it's in Phoenix. It will sell out. We're only having 70, we only have seats for 75 people live. We'll be networking. There'll be a certification program at the end of the day for an extra hundred bucks. Take a test. We'll see if you really know your stuff. Six different topics. Darren will be there. I'll be there. Some other experts. We're going to lay out as much strategy as we can with NFT, oh, that was the other topic. NFTs is one hour. NFTs. So we're gonna do yeah. NFTs and metaverse for an hour as well. We're gonna have an awesome day. Get registered, there's an early bird special. We are gonna hopefully have you, the ability for you to pay for your registration with cryptocurrency here in the next few days. Is that sweet? Awesome. We're gonna, you can that pay for the crypto cool. okay. taxation okay. summit with, with crypto. crypto. I mean, seriously, we, we gotta, gotta throw it down. down. We're gonna do we this. Should. Everybody, thanks for being here. I'll be here next week is Christmas Eve on Thursday, right? Is Thursday Christmas Eve? It could be close. Anyway, I'm going to do a live next week. Everybody, appreciate you. Keep living the dream. Maybe next week we'll do a live just on the metaverse. That could be fun. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you next week. Darren, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you.